prisoners were a group that had long-term sentences in the maximum security prison in Nashville, Tennessee. It's one of the most compelling stories in all of popular music. Especially Johnny Bragg, who had six 99-year sentences. Imagine what it was like for a 17-year-old at one of the most notorious state penitentiaries in the country. It's the scariest, meanest-looking place in the world. New meat, new meat. That's mine, that's mine. I didn't know what they're talking about, about new meat. It's here where he starts to hone his vocal skills. He was a lead singer that was just out of this world. I'm looking for some different guys, trying to find somebody that can sing with me, a quartet. Uh, he formed a singing group while behind the walls, and they dubbed themselves the Prisoners. And you can hear the inmates hollering, shut up, making all that damn noise down there. I had heard about them through Red Wortham and a guy by the name of Jim Bullitt. They were allowed to go to Memphis to make records under armed guard. When they toured now, they were uh, uh, confined. I trusted Johnny with my family and with my life, and I, well, I trusted the whole group. Governor Clement talked to the ward, which is James Edwards, one of the best men in the world. He trusted us, and Governor Clement trusted us too. But sometimes we went to engagement by ourselves. But he felt they shouldn't just sit in a room and do nothing. And he heard us say, and so they invited us to the governor's mansion. Here we had Elvis Presley and the prisoners, and, and I went to bed, and they were still entertaining. Whether they got paid for this or not, I don't know. I doubt very seriously, you know, just got a little time off. The governor called on the prisoners to come over and sing in the backyard for uh, President Truman. He wrote more than just walking in rain. It helped put Sun Records on the map. He used to sell a lot of his songs for, he did specify $5. It was slavery. They beat you half to death. It was a racist society. What they did was remarkable. And what Frank Clement and James Edwards helped them to do was remarkable. Without even trying, with just two performances, Johnny Gregg became immortal. Young. Stupid, didn't know what I was doing. You would find it difficult to really, truly believe that that's exactly the way that it took place. Man, I don't know.